Hello students. So uh, last time we stopped at this page, page 21. Uh, in this page, you already find that uh, some differences between a data segment and a BSS. Well, as you can see here, and let me change the pen. So in this part, this is data segment and in a data large program, I mean this one. So this data large program will have a very big array that put in the global variable zone and get initialized. If you can remember what is this, let's go to our field page before. Yeah, this data large dot C. So you will find that I have initialized it. And that's why you will find that the program size, okay, here is the large digit, and for the BSS, okay, we have the same behavior. But what's changed is, if you initialize everything in the BSS, you will have a, you know, let me change the pen. Here, you will have a very close uh, file size because there's nothing get um, hard code into the program. But if you really hard code the programs, like in this way, here, oops, oh sorry, so you'll find that the data get initialized will be also saved in a file. Okay, so simple as that. Now what's new is uh, we are going to look into the limits of a particular program or I would say the process. So in Linux, so you know, the Linux has a 32-bit system in my computer and when you look at it, every shell will have its own limit. So uh, this shell, let me check. Unit-8 means that I show all the limits that are imposed to the to a particular processes. And you will find that in the data segment here, it said that it's unlimited. That means that, oh wow, it seems to be that there's no limits on the array or how many numbers of global variable that you are going to create. Now, do you believe in that? Let me check with you with the following program. The following program names is core global one gbc okay? So this program, okay, first of all, uh, I define the macro here. The macro is doing a very uh, boring multiplication, which is going to one mega. And one zero two four times one mega, it become one G. Okay, so as simple as that, we are going to allocate one GB of memory. Okay, I mean allocate okay means I declare it, and when the process get run, it will yeah expand the whole global variable zone to at least one GB size. Well, I'm not satisfied with that. I will also check if that zone is usable or not. Okay, very important now. If it's not usable, okay, we will have well many kind of runtime errors, maybe segmentation ports. Okay, but if it's not going to happen, then we will have this okay statement get print out. Okay? Now let me show you the effects. First of all, I will compile the program. Oops, one GB dot C. Okay. Well, it need time to create the program, so let's wait for a moment. Okay, done. Okay, let's say secure it. It says one GB okay. So what is the meaning? The meaning is that we really create a big array, and that array is one GB size. Okay, I guess this is your first time to have a, such a large array get created. Okay. And well, in this program, okay, we have a statement called MEM set. I hope that you know what it is. If you don't know what it is, let's read the main page. 
MEM set means that, okay, I have a pointer pointing to a B3 variable, okay, I'm not, I mean, don't mean a B3 variable, but a piece of memory, okay, and I am going to initialize it to be the C here, okay, so let me enlarge it. The C here, the C here is the value that you want to write on every byte, and for how many bytes? We will write n bytes. Okay, so let's switch back to program. That means that I have a pointer pointing to a variable called a, and for the size of a, which is a 1 GB, I will initialize every byte to 0. Okay, as simple as that. Okay, now what's next? Of course, we are going to try it out many, many other kinds of limits. Wow, that's becoming very interesting that, okay, how about 2 GB? First of all, we should understand that there is no such limit imposed in uh, the global variable so because the song get a, a limited size statement here. Wow, that's cool. That means what? That means we can easily create another array which is a double of the previous program. I will keep the same structure below, so I will call it MEM set. After the set is a uh, is successful, I will have a printout. Now, what I'm going to show you is a compilation error. What is the compilation error? That means that it is not concerning the runtime. Okay, I can run it, I can create it, but before that, I cannot compile it. Now let's see what happened. This is the 2 GB program, okay? And uh, well, one map means a two to the power. Two, to, I mean, uh, yeah. Let me open another program. Okay, I treat it as a blackboard. Okay, so 1024 is equal to 2 to the power 10, okay? So uh, my previous program asked for 1 GB, okay? Now I asked for 1 GB means that it is 2 to the power 30, okay? And what's next? I mean, uh, this is equal to 1 GB. How about 2 to the power 31? Now it's become 2 GB, okay? Everybody know this, but how about this program? I'm going to compile it. Let's use recycle the previous command. Okay, yeah. Let me move the terminal a bit. Okay, so 2 GB. 2 GB. Okay, same structure. Let me compile it. And you will find that there is a big warning here followed by an an error okay so the big warning already tell you something interesting it says integer overflow in expression so uh, I don't know which line but I can tell you that it is this line okay it means that the statement that I define the size of an array is going to be overflow okay and after the overflow the program states that on the same line, the array A, okay, I don't know why I didn't write any negative number, but it's complained that it is a negative number, which is uh, out of my expectation. What's happened? Wow. Let me check with you, okay, whether you know, yeah, what is a signed integer versus an unsigned integer. If it is an unsigned integer, that means that we have 32 bits for storing digits, I mean storing data, okay? If it is a signed integer, okay? So what if it is an unsigned integer? That means for the most significant, most significant bit is for stating whether it is a negative integer negative yeah negative or a positive 
integer. So that means what? That means, yeah, I have only 31 bits for storing data for, oh, oh sorry, periods is unsigned integer. I mean, I have only 31 bit to store a signed integer. If it's for storing signed integer, that means that I will have the most. Yeah, let me have a curly braces here. The greatest number that I can save is 2 to the power 31 minus 1. Okay, and the complete range is 2 to the power 31. Yeah, which is negative number minus 1 multiplied by this 2 to the power 31 minus 1 okay so uh, that means what that means for the digit or uh, for a number 2 GB which is equal to 2 to the power 31 is out of bound okay if we really want to save this number into a signed integer, then I will flow and create a negative number. Now, I'll never tell you a secret. The secret is, no matter you are using C++ or C, okay, this index, I mean the size of an array, is always a signed integer. Okay, so that means what? Yeah, I cannot create such a big array. Don't worry, okay, don't worry. What's next? Let me switch back to the PowerPoint. What's next is, uh, yeah, I know that I have a, I have a big trouble here. Well, why not we uh, change the program a little bit? As shown in this PowerPoint slides. Oops, all right. This PowerPoint slides, yeah, I mean the PowerPoint slides, okay, tell you that Okay, to get around of this uh, overflow problem, why not we split the size that I want to allocate into pieces, okay? Don't keep that 2GB array into one, but I split it into several parts. As in this example, this program, okay, I'm doing such a crazy thing. I split the amount of memory that I want to create on a global variable zone is three parts, okay, that means add together 3 GB. On the other side, four. This is cool. Well, let's go to have a demonstration. Yeah, I'm using my computer to take the risk of uh, using up all the memories. So uh, don't try it out in any public computer. Okay, so uh, this is a 3GB program. Yeah, very nice color here. So uh, let me show you what is going on if I allocate only 2GB of memory. Well, to you it's very obvious. I have three arrays. One is called A and then B and then C. I comment out the C1 and it become A and B. So 2GB of size. After I can allocate one, I will set it to all zeros and then say that okay 1GB is okay and how about the next one the next one I will also do the same thing but I change the name to B well so happened that A and B are of the same size so far so cool let's go oh why not I just make okay make oops global 3GB cool I've compiled it. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, remember, although the name is called 3 GB, okay, I will only create a memory of 2 GB. First guy, okay. Second guy, cool. Yeah, we finished. Yeah, I mean, we're not finished, but the program the process finished. Okay, so the process get finished. That means that I can allocate 2 GB. How about 3? Wow, 3 is not that trivial. Okay, let me compile it. Compilation, done. Okay, yeah, how about also compile the 
4GB one. Okay, the 4GB is up to date. That means that I didn't change anything. Okay, if you don't believe in me, okay, yeah, just like the uh, yeah, Toon Magic Show, we will also show you the code. Same code, but A, B, C, D, four arrays. Each array is 1GB. Okay, we can compile both programs. Now, let me run the 3GB in front of you. I said it's not trivial because the warning is killed. That, that's not warning, but it's really get killed. Later on, I'll tell you why. How about 4GB? Yeah, it's face some problem and then it says 17 volts. Now, what is going on? Remember, yeah, this is a command. Okay, oh, sorry. A command called U name minus A. It means it print out the system information, including okay, the OS type, the kernel version, I mean the version, or and also the architecture. Okay, so remember your name for it. My U minus A means such a thing. So when I type U name minus A, I will find that okay, this is Linux. And I cannot find any information about the whether it's a 32 bit or 64 bit architecture. By default, it doesn't say anything, it means it is a 32 bit architecture. So far, so good. Now, if it's 32 bit, you still if you still remember that, okay, 32 bit means what? 2 to the power 32, okay, 2 to the power 32, and you understand that. This 2 to the power 32 is translated into the addressable memory size of 4 GB minus 1 byte. Okay? Well, I mean, I mean uh, the, the valid range. Okay, from 0 to 4 GB minus 1. Well, then that means what? That means our previous demonstration, okay, I cheat you guys. I cheat you by having this program allocating what seems to be 4GB memory. I can compile it, but the compiler didn't know that you are doing such a crazy stuff. So it allows you to run, and as a matter of fact, this is a 64 bit computer. You go beyond the 64 bit limit, you have an overflow. So that means what? That means uh, I will have a big trouble. The data port here, okay, I mean, I mean this guy, I mean this guy, the data, okay, is, well, 265, well, meaning that I, I'm in big trouble, I make something wrong, and the program think that it really have such a small size, but as a matter of fact, it's going to, yeah, have a big allocation, and you have a segmentation fault because of the size difference. And how about 3GB? Okay, wow, cool. The 3GB tell you that, okay, I'm allocating such a big chunk of data, okay, over 3GB, okay, because there is other global variables allocation in other places, and this range is an invented assignment. What is the meaning? The meaning is that on every computer, if it's going to a 32-bit Linux system, Okay, the addressable space or addressing space. I mean, if you can not get what I say, I mean this guy. Addressing space. That means the total range of the addresses is from 0 to 3 GB. You cannot go to 4 GB. Why? Because the kernel, okay, that invincible objects inside the computer will reserve always reserve 1 GB I mean 1 GB addressing space okay so what is the difference I have a space from 0 to 2 to the power 32 minus 1 but doesn't mean that I have a physical memory that is able to store 4 GB of physical data. Well, say you have only a 512 mega 
file of memory that you have. How come you can have a memory addressing space of this size? Okay, which is uh, not possible if you think that it translates into real data. We means only space. That means that okay, I have such a space, but may not be using it to the fullest capacity. Okay, so the kernel is reserving one GB of the space, but not the RAM. Okay, remember it is not really allocating such kind of yeah, 1 GB of memory. So, let me check with you here. I have the 3 GB because of the kernel restriction. Okay, I cannot go beyond 3 GB. So, when I execute again, it gets killed because the kernel finds that okay, you are infringing into my space. I will check you. Okay. And for the 4GB, the reason is because of the 32-bit control. Now, what happened? Yeah. If I go to another machines, it is Department Linux. 3 minus M means print out. Okay. 3 minus M is a new command means printing out the available or free memory in the system minus m means in terms of map goodbye okay so that means what that means for this particular computer linux 15 it has 32 gb of memory wow 32 g of memory okay what's next of course you name minus a if you remember that Unix minus U name minus A will print out the architecture. If you see this, it means it is a 64-bit computer. So this 64-bit computer containing 32 GB of memory. So I guess I can really allocate 4 GB of memory size because the addressing space of a 64-bit computer, 64-bit computer. Oh, I miss it. Minus here, 64 bit computer, you will have an addressing space from 0 all the way up to 2 to the power 64 minus 1. Wow, which is a yeah, extraordinary large number. So uh, let's forget about it. And well, what we're supposed to do is to do a yeah, do the damage. Really allocating 4 GB of RAM now again. Don't run this program in your public computer, only in your physical, I mean your laptop, your PC, whatever. So uh, let me check something. I will have a, yeah, let me print out. After I finish all the things, I will print out my PID, okay? And also have a post statement here, if you cannot see it clearly, okay? I will... Let it finish everything, print out my PID, I will have a pause here so that I really allocate all 4 GB of memory and then I will use top. Still remember the command top to check to check what? To check whether the allocation is happening or not. Let's go. Oops. Okay. Good. Okay, forget about the warning. The warning is uh, still okay. Okay, I suspect that uh, some people are running some your CPU intensive job in this computer, so that I cannot have such kind of a uh, yeah fast compilation. You you never experienced that, right? Compilation is so slow, so slow. Okay, done. Okay, let's go. 1GB, 2GB, 3GB, 4GB, yeah, I stopped there, wow, my PID is 474, yeah, it's an imaginary number in your, I mean, an ordinary PC, don't care about it, suspend, cool, yeah, oh, there is WK child is wanting some things, yeah, it in a 4GB of memory, and another guy is called KK Tong, it up 11G, and how about me? You cannot find me, right? How about... Oops. Oops, oops, oops. 
with 474. See? I'm here. I take up a 13% of the memory, which is 4 GB. See? It is a 64 bit computer. Yeah, remember the foreground it killed it. Free of all memory. Remember that if you are going in a 64 bit computer, you will always be successful in allocating big chunk of data. So get prepared when you log into a particular computer. Remember to check its architecture to see whether it's 30 bit or 64 bit or not before you program or you deploy your program. Okay, so that's why I would say that this chapter is going to look up every limit and adopt into every limit. Okay, we have another type of data. Previous type is called data segment, global variables, and other static variables. So how about the next guy? The next guy is called stack. Well, stack is this in, is this the same thing as in a data. I mean, the data structure course, yeah, it's really behaves similar to that stack, okay? But first of all, let's you to take a look what really is contained inside the stack. Well, we have four big guys here, okay? First one, local variables. I mean, no matter how many functions you have, all local variables of every function will be stored in this particular guy here stack and also function parameters when you call function you will passing parameters and later on I will tell you what exactly is uh, well what's the name oh pass by values okay, I will tell you exactly what is that pass by value and what is program argument like a ls minus l minus l is the program argument and uh well what's the next guy the next guy is environment variables. Do you remember assignment one, the shell? You have environment variable called path. Okay? And as a matter of fact, okay, these three guys, this guy, this guy, and also this guy, are all contain well I mean not contain but I get paths from the outside. Okay? As a function parameters the argument counts, argument factor, and also the environment factor are all passed in. Now, the next program is quite horrible. So what is that program? This next program seems to be very horrible. Okay, so it's called main.c. The next program here is going to tell you one thing. Okay, so let me enlarge. Okay, so the first guy is the local variable called i. Okay, I want I want to tell you that this i is stored in the stack. Okay, well, just believe in me. And the next thing is okay, I have a value called argument counts. Where does it get stored? It's also stored in the stack. But I, uh, you need me to cons. Yeah, I have some uh, reason to convince you. I will show you the address in this line. And also the argument vector, the address of argument vector, and also address of the environment vector. So let me switch back to the PowerPoint. Okay, and you will find that this argument count, argument vector, and also environment vector are close together, separated by four bytes. Remember, a pointer is a four byte size, so they are contiguous. Do you believe me? Seems not. Oh, we have so much fun here. Don't worry. I is here. And when you plus 4, okay, C is uh, what? What is C? C is A is 10, B is 11, C is 12. Okay, so when 12 plus 4 is 16, is it, yeah, it is a, yeah, another thing. So uh, don't worry. Here, you have 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 8. They are all contagious, but you when you add four to the one, you find that it's not contagiously uh, adjacent. I mean, uh, it's not contagious. It means adjacent. I don't mean it's adjacent to the argument count. Why is that? Okay, because we have some uh slack space. Okay, in between I and ARGC. But believe in me, they are in the same zone. These two guys, in the stack zone, and another 
fun part about this is uh, what is the content? So what is the meaning of what is content? I mean the real content ARGB1, ARGB0 where are they stored? It's actually inside the stack but I don't want to explain too, in too much details okay so I will try to avoid it and another thing I want to talk about is decreasing address okay you will find that I write yeah as in as the same as a stack location that you find in their structure but there is a special arrows a special arrow I mean this guy okay this guy is an arrow and this show you that this is the decreasing address the meaning is like this let me go to the previous slides I mean from this direction from the base of the process we all the way go up okay it is increasing address yeah at the start of the of this part I already said that this is the lowest I mean not possible but just lowest lowest address that you can find and uh, you can uh, have a increasing address all the way up but previous illustration I mean the illustration in the next part point you will find that it's a decreasing address the decreasing address means that well actually oh I missed my pen let me have a pen okay so this is the base of the stack and this direction is decreasing address so that means what? that means we are going into a very interesting scenario the scenario is that we are inverting the drawing of a stack and it's really okay when we allocate space from a stack it is from the bottom and the bottom is the highest address and all the way down to have a decreasing address manner okay and in other drawings in this part I will also keep on using this notation because this notation is very abundant in all kinds of books and all kinds of papers all kinds of research or not research type of paper doesn't matter it's use this notation and this notation means that this stack okay will grow in a inverse order and well, what is the allocation of space in a stack in the last lecture okay I already asked you how to allocate space from stack and by some discussion we already know that okay if I want to grow a stack okay we have to call more functions and for each functions we will create new I mean not mean new but uh, I mean we use up stack space to host local variables yeah as if I allocated space from the stack and when we return from the functions okay you are really doing the alloc the allocation means that okay means that I don't want a memory because I return okay and according to our experience in running assignment one I mean the warm up assignment one not the programming assignment one okay we have a trouble in understanding this why because it seems that when I return from a functions the local variable is not really the allocated and in the following slides I'll explain to you this such a complex idea and let me take you to further place here how the kernel is really allocating space to you and as a matter of fact really surprisingly this is not about kernel it's about some uh, compiler hard coding job okay the compiler really hard code the growing and the allocating mechanism okay but in this class we don't look at assembly code I will leave this task to other courses say that if you are studying in the CS and CE curriculum you will find a CSCI or CNG 3420 will talk about this okay I'm a little bit ahead of them but uh, well I will leave the assembly code to them but uh, keep in mind that this is not going through any system call to grow the stack or shank the stack it is a compiler task okay so uh, we have this program and this program is a uh, yeah just a stupid program how stupid it is I mandated calling two layers of functions starting from the main okay and you will find that this program is not interesting because why it's just an illustration I'm not going to show you some 
special test. Okay, this is the first function call, this is second function call, and there is no third because in the third function, the function two, I mean, uh, main is the first guy, function one is the second guy, and fun two is the third guy. And the third functions, okay, we will return. Okay, so you will expect what? You will expect we're calling two functions and ask them to return values back to the main, and the main will finally return. Now, first of all, here we have the return address 1. So what's that? Okay, first of all, this is a stack illustration, and what I'm going to illustrate to you is the real implementation. In the real implementation, no matter you're using Intel CPU or Spark CPU in the Unix environment, we will have similar control over the stack. And the stack utilization is like this. I have a return address in this location. In this location, the return address is here. What's that? This return address is an uh, address pointing to the code segment. That's why I color it in a green, okay, to fit in our previous coloring scheme. This is pointing back to the C library. C library here. Okay, so you will wonder what is the meaning of this. Actually, main, when it being called, okay, you call it from a shell. When a shell executes it, you use the execute system call. And actually, the execute system call is actually calling the C library to do some tasks for you, like switch to the main of your program. Okay, and now it switch to the main and the CPU will execute your code, and after your code return from main, it will go back to the C library. So the return address means that to where inside the C library, the main should go back to. So this is a 4 byte address pointing to the code inside the C library. Now, let me forget about it for a moment. And we have two variables, they are local variables inside the main, which is called A and B. Okay, and the order inside the stack doesn't matter. Yeah, some implementation we have A in the bottom, some implementation we have B in the bottom. It doesn't concern, I mean, it doesn't uh, change our discussion. Our discussion, the main point is they will carry the values put into the stack. Okay, so it is one and two. And now I'm going to call functions. And the calling function is called fun one. Okay. Before I can really call, I mean really switch to the execution inside fun one before the calling of the function. We will put the return address number two in the stack. Just push it there. Push it there. Why we have to push such a return address? It means that when function one return, I will ask this CPU when you return to go back to this location. Oh, by the way, what is this location? Let me jump ahead one slice. This is just for your eyes only. This is not a real implementation using assembly code, just an illustration. The illustration said that, okay, I have this return address get pushed into the stack. And when I pop up, I mean not pop up, I mean pop the return address, it means that I will go back to this location to continue the execution of the original main function. Okay? Oh, by the way, you will find two extra push function. The push function are concerning the value of A and B. Now, let me jump back to the previous code, the previous slides. The previous slides, you will find that I will push two extra value, and later on, these two values will become the placeholder U and V. Oh, sorry. What is the man meaning of becoming the place of the U and V? When you push in there, okay, the value of this originally should be V, right? The value con contains there is become becoming the value of V. So you will find that, whoa, actually, what is the meaning of pass by value? You are pushing the value of a particular variable inside the stack and when the control switch to function 1 this location inside the stack become the placeholder V 
But the value is coming from the value B in the main. This is the true meaning of pass by value. Okay, I push something into the stack, and the, later on, the local variable inside function will take its place and becoming the local variable V. This is pass by value. And let us continue the story. I will call fun2. Oops, sorry. Okay, when I call fun2, you will have the same story. I push the return address so that when fun2 returns, it knows that I should return to this particular location here. Sorry, yeah, here. This particular location. Wow, no fun at all. But uh, what is um, the funny part here? I swapped the order of UV just to tell you that okay, it may obey the order inside your call. Okay, I swap the orders. Previously it's one two, and then now it's two one. It doesn't matter. Just a show here, and when the program really get using the, the call system I'm mean, not system called the call assembly function to call function two again the two variables values from u and v become x and y and now I also push in one more variable local variable c. Now when the edge gator is become a what's the value? Yeah it's just a 13. Now I have to return return what? We turn the yeah I can switch to the pen okay so I will have to do the return here and return actually uh will cause two effects the first effect is of course returning the value and the next is the allocation of the stack space as if this kind of this bunch of variables in this location will pop. Yeah, we have four pops, okay? And when they all pop up, okay, the top of the stack now becomes this guy. This is the top. Okay, I only want a T here because I'm very hard to write something. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm using a mouse only. So uh, this is the top part. Now this all pop out. And where is the return value? Now this is one particular thing that you have to really memorize. For Intel CPU, every return value will be passed to the register called EAX inside Intel CPU. And now you will understand one important point. Why we can only have one return value. See? Because inside the assembly code, okay, we can only return something back to the calling function using a only one 32-bit CPU register. So you can only use one value as the return value. That's why. And we can also learn another effect. Why when I change everything, I mean uh, every part particular variable get passed from a caller inside function say x and y here. If I change x and y into other values, when I return from this function fun2, the caller will not get the change. And the reason is I pop them out. I didn't concern how what I mean what is the value that you're going to change. I don't care because when I pop out, okay, I will still use back the old values that I stored previously. I mean the caller, the fun one. See? This is the reason why when you are using pass by value, nothing will be changed. Very cool, huh? What's next? We will return. From fun one, we have still the same thing happens. Okay, here you will have uh, the return values and get written to EAX and the location of the return is uh, more or less the same here. And last, okay, I will save the value back to the variable B. So now variable B will change. Now the various very very important point here. And this very important point tell you why your warm-up assignment will have some problem. Okay? Now before I explain this, let me switch to our 
yeah, forgot to open the warm up assignment. Just wait for a moment. Okay, warm up one. Yeah, my specification. I should have a PDF here. Great. Okay, so if you can remember, we have warm up assignment one like this. Okay, and the trick is that I cannot swap the swap the orders of these two statements and now you will understand why we cannot do so first of all this function sucks okay it return the address of this variable c and now you should understand one point the one point is that here this gray part although it will pop out the value we are not really implementing a proper stack this variables here are not returned to the OS not return wow cool so what is the meaning of not return to the OS the variable okay I mean a non variable the stack get grow will not shrink okay the, the value will be keep inside until you call the next wave of function call and when you call the next function this value will be overwritten. Now let's switch back to the PDF. Now you know what's happening. I'm calling this function and when I pass the address out in this location, in this location, I pass out the value, I mean the value is pointer or the address of this local variable C in the addition function we can still point to that particular location and read out everything well cool that means what that means this DL no, I mean, the location I mean the referencing action is valid this the reference action is actually calling out the previous value of the variable C no problem I can read it Take it out and you can find it while you are doing warm up sign one. And then I will call the function point f. And by the time I call the function point f, the stack will be overwritten. Yeah, because point f is not a system call, it's just function call. I still use the stack. Okay, so that's why we cannot swap the order, we cannot swap these two orders. Okay, hope you understand what I mean. And what I mean is that very important that this not return to the OS. And eventually I will face this return zero. Now this is no longer returning to the OS or not. It is about eventually we will call one thing. And the thing is called the system call exit. Okay, in the C, inside the C library, when you call return zero, it means go back to the C library. C library eventually call access system call. Problem comes. Once the problem comes, when you call access system call, what will happen? The process is done. Okay, process is gone. So when a stack, well, I don't care whether you're in the color gray or orange, they are all returned to the system because the process does not exist anymore. So very different from the previous case here, previous case is that I still have a process. I'm still in the main, but the gray variable song here just stayed there, but I, we cannot use it. Yeah, I mean, I can use it, but I can use some tricks to use it. So this is about the mechanism of the push or pop. Now, one more thing is about can I do something very nasty? Okay, well, which mean nasty means uh, I'm a hacker. Well, I'm a hacker. Can I use the variable to override a particular location in this place? Sure is yes. What is the meaning? The meaning is that I can use a pointer get the location inside the stack and travel inside the stack and this is one problem for using stack the stack itself is no protection I will not protect a variable inside the fun one okay so what is the meaning inside the fun one say do I have any protection over the variable v from changing using a pointer 
inside the function to no we do not have such a protection okay so you can use whatever functions whatever pointers to transfer the entire stack very dangerous huh and it is uh, sometimes horrible profitable and fun to do so this is the basics of hacking inside Momentum Unix, Linux, Mac, or Windows. Okay, of course I want to talk about limits. Previous case that I talk about limits in the global variable zone, we have unlimited space there. How about that? Okay. Unit limit again. Whoa, cool. So many things have popped up, but uh, wow, I need to yeah look for it. Lean, linear search, good. I find that it is. Oops, one eight one nine two is it eight one nine two? Okay, eight one nine two is said is KB. Okay, so as a matter of fact, this is just equal to eight megabyte. Okay, because. One oh, oh, eight, one nine two is equal to eight times one zero two four, so eight megabyte. Cool. How cool is that? Can I do something like that? I have a big yeah. It, it when it compared to the global variable, so it's small, but it still is big. A big local array. I open it. What will happen? Oops, what's that? The oh, max stat. Okay, max stat. Let's see. Okay, so uh, it is 8192. Okay, I will. Yeah, let me enlarge the screen. Okay, so uh, I have a big stat array. I want to MEM set it. If it's okay, I can allocate 8 megabyte from the stack. Cool. Okay, now, okay. Also, I will use the same tricks to check. Whether I really allocate such a space. Okay, let's do it. Segmentation points. So, what is the meaning? The meaning is that I cannot reach this point. I really cannot have such a big stat. Okay, this is the limit. I hit the limit, I fail, I get killed by the system. Now, how about I reduce the size a bit? To yeah, how about like this? Okay, compile it. Good. Max that. Oh, is that okay? That means I can finish the access of the variables, and I can print out the PID. Let me check. Okay. So uh, suspend. Oops, oops, oops. Suspension here. Suspension and then yeah let me move it a bit top minus P okay this number and you can see that wow well, really I have uh, such a allocation of space here no problem so you know the stack is a uh, Yes, something that for very limited space, so it is eight megabytes, so uh, we very with restricted resources. So uh, better optimize your program. So uh, this is the conclusion. I want to skip this part. What is more important is that well, what's happen if the stack is full, right? Have you ever tried one thing? You forgot about the ending or the termination scenario of a recursion program yeah very dangerous huh so uh, the problem is that the stack is limited of 8 megabyte and when you use up all the space it cannot expand beyond that 8 megabyte you have a big problem and the big problem is called stack overflow exception okay so what is that exception? Exception means that all the stack space is full and the CPU will catch this special exception. And this exception, the default handler is program termination. 
And when you look at it from the terminal, it is always say the segmentation fault. But actually, it is not a simple segmentation fault. It is not something related to the null pointer as uh, access or your array out of bound exception. But uh, it is a stack overflow exception. But in C, it's uh, become very funny. It's always use the name segmentation fault. Yeah, you don't love it, right? I also. So uh, what happened if I really want to play with recursion with more levels? Okay, say that you can only handle 10 levels of recursion in your current program, and how can I make it become 20? That means doubling the number of recursion. Well, very simple. The simple way is don't obey any orders from your first year lecturer. Yeah. They always tell you don't use global variable. Then now I will let you to have a try to try to use more global variable. Well, the global variable is very important in reducing the overhead of each recursion. Say that you will try to put something onto the global variable so that you will minimize the number of arguments for your recursive functions, or you can also use global variable or malloc to reduce the number of local variables. Yeah, the arguments and local variables. And also, sometimes you can even minimize your call of the functions. Say that, yeah, you are going to do a factorial. Why Why you use re recursion? Why not do a for loop, right? Only use recursion when you really need to. Okay, so in general, my advice is Use global variable wisely. Okay. Let's go to the hip. Yeah, I will only talk about a few slides and we will continue lectures in in the coming Monday. Okay, and in the coming Monday I mean in November next day. Yeah, November twenty sixth, okay. What well, a hip so first of all the number one problem about hip is is name. Well what does that mean? The meaning is that I really want to emphasize one point. Don't mix it up with a binary heap. Okay, I completely did the mistake while I was an undergraduate student. Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah, whether this heap is different from another heap. I don't know. Well, I will always want to emphasize that this is just a pile of things. Yeah, don't treat it as a as a binary heap. Okay, nothing. Related to sorting, nothing related to the data structure, but just a space, and that space allows you to grow dynamically, just very similar, just similar to the stack. Okay, and allocation is very interesting. If you raise up your hand and ask for something, and the system find that there are available space, you will get that thing. Else, if you don't raise up your hand, yeah, ask for the heap space. Okay. You will have nothing, and if you try to assess, uh, what is the meaning of assess? Either read or write into this particular song, you will have big trouble. If it's not allocated, if it's not allocated and you assess it, you will have segmentation faults. Okay. Next is yeah the task of the OS course again, is to define. Yo, yo, where, where, where? Okay, the pen is to define and also define all things that you got from the year one course. Okay, so your first programming course, okay, I don't know whether you are learning C or C, but sorry for those who learn Java. Java don't have malloc, but we have similar call. It's called new. New also use malloc. Yeah, that's the truth. And malloc and free come in a pair. And in this part, you will try to learn one thing. Malloc is not going to look in the system and find your memory. Well, that's not entirely true. Malloc sometimes don't involve any system call. And sometimes yes, sometimes no. And how about free? Free is the say this very much like the reverse of malloc. But I will say that again. If Malloc is calling system call sometimes. Free also free up memory using system call occasionally. 
Okay, later on you will understand that. Okay, so folks, this is the end of the lectures. Thank you very much.